you can find a way and yet not interact with the truth and you will find out that even though it is in prophecy even though it is part of the package of eternal life that you should walk in life indeed you may never see it in your life i am the way if you follow that path correctly it will lead you to truth and there is something that happens to you when you interact with that truth the end point is life welcome to chat now channel we are glad you tuned in today to experience another life-changing encounter in God's presence. The Bible says in Psalm 119 verses 130, The entrance of thy word is that light. As you listen and watch, may you experience the transformative power of God's light. Stem such that your first encounter, as far as the journey to liberty is concerned, is called salvation. Or what we call being born again or the new birth experience. This is a very simple statement, but follow carefully. In John chapter 3 and verse 16, the Bible tells us that for God so loved the world, he gave his only then begotten son, that whosoever, I've taught you that this blessing is for whosoever, believeth on him should not perish, but have everlasting life. Verse 17 says, For God did not send his son into the world to condemn the world, but that the world through him might be saved. Are we together? Romans 10, 9 and 10. The Bible says that if you believe with your heart that God raised him from the dead and confessing with your mouth the Lordship of Jesus, you shall be saved. The general rule is in verse 10 that with the heart, the heart is the instrument of believing unto righteousness and that with the mouth confession is made unto salvation. Are we together? In 1 John chapter 5, reading from 11 and 12, I'm showing you that the starting point of any believer's desire to experience liberty and freedom that is in Christ is starts with salvation. If for any reason you follow the path that you propose or is proposed to you to bring you liberty and you bypass salvation, you've already gotten it wrong. Are we together? You can encounter a miracle service, you can encounter a deliverance service, you can encounter a healing meeting, whatever it is, any route you follow is simply an inferior route. God's route, God's system of administering liberty to the saints, bringing the saints to the experience of the God life, of liberty, of power, is that number one, the experience salvation or being born again. First John chapter 5, 11 and 12 and this is the record that God hath given unto us eternal life say eternal life and that this life is in his son read verse 12 with me if you can see it ready one to read he that hath the son aha uh -huh, hath life and he that hath not the son of God hath not life it's as simple as that say salvation one more time say salvation the new birth experience is the starting point. Now listen carefully. The new birth experience I wrote here, you may want to write now. The new birth experience is not the totality of the believer's experience, but the starting point of the journey to liberty and victory. Let me take it again. That the new birth experience is not the totality of the believer's experience no that is not all the believer should experience it is the starting point of a journey that eventually culminates to victory and liberty in experience just not knowing this alone will keep you defeated forever even when you are saved the new birth experience in order of spiritual priority is the starting point but not the totality of the believer's experience it is only the starting point of a journey that should lead to victory and liberty second point about salvation that you should know in helping you understand the dynamics of liberty i wrote here is that being saved listen being saved by confessing the lordship of jesus does not automatically bring you into the experience of victory hmm. being saved 
by confessing the Lordship of Jesus, genuinely so, does not automatically bring you into the experience of victory. Many sincere believers have been victims of this. There is a narrative that the moment you get saved, automatically you begin to function in the experience of victory. It is not so. Jesus who came as a pattern man, that was not even the pattern he followed. That was not the pattern the apostles followed. If that is your understanding, something is wrong that needs to be adjusted. Being saved by confessing the Lordship of Jesus does not automatically in itself bring you into the experience of victory. Now listen carefully. Being saved or being born again gives you access, not experience. Being saved gives you access, not experience. It gives you access. The door is open. The new and living way is open. Now you can access it. Jesus started by saying, I am the way. Is that in your Bible? Why did he bring that description? I am the way. That way leads you to truth. And that truth administers life. It's not just I am the way. You can choose the way. Or you can choose the truth. It's still me. Or you can choose. No, it is a map he's giving you. That in learning me and in experiencing life, you don't start experiencing life by experiencing life. You start experiencing life by finding the way. If it is the right way, it will lead you to reality, truth. And there is something you do with that truth that will give you life. Did you get that? I am the way. It's a path. So the moment you find the way, you start rejoicing because the way is proof that you are already on the journey to experiencing life indeed. When he says, I am come that ye may have life, this is the dynamics. You don't have life by just having life. You have life by knowing and finding the way. If you follow the wrong way, that already corrupts your potential to experiencing life. But that when you find the way, you don't just jump into life. Between the way and the experience of life, there is something called truth. You can find the way and yet not interact with the truth. And you will find out that even though it is in prophecy, even though it is part of the package of eternal life, that you should walk in life indeed, you may never see it in your life. I am the way. If you follow that path correctly, it will lead you to truth. And there is something that happens to you when you interact with that truth. The end point is life. So salvation grants you access. Access to now begin the journey that administers inexperience. Because you see, the initial new birth experience affects your spirit man principally. Please listen carefully. The part in the salvation experience that is instant and finished is your spirit man. Not your mind and not your body. Are we together now? So when an individual comes to Christ and confesses his lordship, what part of him exactly receives that life? It is a spirit interaction. That is why, with all due respect, the person can be as foolish as he came to the altar and return back and still act foolishly, even though he received Jesus. Are we together now? Yeah. The person can have struggles while on stage and go back and you'll be surprised. Now, potentially, he has come into the way and he has received a deposit of that life in his spirit man. But he does not need it there. It needs to be lived out in the physical realm and that there is a protocol, there is a rule of engagement that translates the reality of that life such that tomorrow you can see the one saved person and know that this person has become a child of God. The effulgence of eternal life has spilled over from his spirit man. Now his body, his life, his condition becomes a testament that he has met Jesus. If there was nothing more to initial salvation, there would be no need for pastors because there are people who met God on their own. There would be no need for churches. There would be no need for empowerment programs. Are we together now? There would be no need for the fivefold ministry. In fact, 
there would be no need for the Holy Spirit after you are saved. Why did God so design it that it is even after you are saved, you receive the Holy Spirit? It means it is a journey and that that journey you cannot go on your own. That is the reason why the moment you are saved, the Holy Spirit comes to help you and begins that journey. And God plants you under a teaching ministry that now begins to build you. He says, this is life eternal, John 17, 3, that they may know, not just that they may receive, that they may know thee, the only true God and Jesus whom thou hast sent. If you're with me, say amen. amen. So we're discussing the ministry of light and under this we're looking at the dynamics of liberty and I said number one, liberty starts with having this encounter with Jesus. God's intent for the believer was not just salvation from sin and Satan. Please listen to this. God's intent for the believer was not just salvation from sin and Satan, but an opportunity to live in victory while serving his purposes. That means when the believer becomes saved, that is not all God's goal for him. It is the starting point. Are we together? God's goal for the believer or intent for the believer was not just salvation from sin and Satan, but that after salvation from sin and Satan, that believer comes into a point of victory, living and enjoying victory that comes with the divine life while serving the purposes of the kingdom. First Timothy chapter 2, 3 and 4. First Timothy chapter 2, verse 3 and 4. Here's what the Bible says. In fact, let's start from verse 1 to put it in context. I exhort therefore, he says, that first of all supplications, prayers, intercessions, and giving of thanks be made for all men, verse 2, for kings and for all that are in authority, that we may lead a quiet and a peaceable life in all godliness and honesty, verse 3, for this is good, what is good, that art of praying for those in authority is good and acceptable in the sight of God, our Savior now digresses and gives you a more information about that God that God will have all men to be what uh-huh and to come on to the knowledge of the truth you see that now God's desire is number one to have all men saved but it does not just leave them there that when they are now saved the starting point of the journey then they come on to the knowledge of the truth why because it is in knowing the truth that you are free free indeed salvation the experience of the new birth it is not the total experience that the believer needs it is the initial experience that brings you into the kingdom. That means if you are not saved, there is no access for you to enjoy other benefits in the kingdom. Are you seeing why salvation is important? You cannot bypass salvation and use miracles to get life. You will not. Because everybody Jesus saved before he died. Are we together? Everybody that Jesus healed before he died was not saved. They still died. Everybody that Jesus delivered before he died, there was no possibility of receiving eternal life before Jesus died. But there was a possibility of healing, multiplying bread. Every miracle you seek to happen in your life already happened to men before they received Jesus. So if you just use miracles and signs and wonders as a replacement for salvation, that is already a mistake. That when you want people to become a manifestation of God's glory, look up please, you will have to give them more than a healing. You will have to give them more than deliverance from demon spirits. Because even if you cast out those demon spirits and they are not saved, the demon spirits have a legitimate access to still return to that body. Legitimate. Are we together? If you prophesy over people and they get jobs that is wonderful but those jobs they are still under the influence of the systems and the structures of life they've not been elevated by the blessings that come with salvation salvation is very important every believer intending to be like God in experience 
and to experience the liberty that is in Christ, the first part of call. That means, listen, look at me. Every time you see someone sick, think salvation first before healing. You get the point? Yes. Every time you see someone depressed, if someone comes to talk to you and say, I don't like the way my life is, just look at them. You may counsel the person, but I'm saying God in God's mind, if you want that person to experience lasting liberty, the most important discussion, regardless what state, is the salvation of that person. If that person could not be healed by your hand and you get that person saved, you have put him on the way. He has come closer to experiencing the truth that will bring him life. Are we together? Now, there are many people who sometimes, they have people who are sick, depressed. They have people who are poor, looking for help. And they are not able to provide all those other helps. But they are able to lead the person to Jesus and they still live disappointed. They say, but this person was looking for rent. I couldn't give him rent, but I preached to him about Jesus and he got genuinely saved. Let me tell you, you have done something noble in the kingdom because you have brought that person closer to solving that rent problem forever. Because with the way will come access to the truth. You see that now? And if it is truth indeed, eventually he will experience life and life in all its ramification, which includes being prosperous. Let's go to the next point. Dynamics of liberty. So number one is salvation. But I told you that salvation by confessing the Lordship of Jesus does not automatically bring you into the experience of victory. Please listen to that. It is rather concerned with giving you access. We believe you were blessed by the message you just watched. Let us know what stood out to you in the comment section. You can also support our channel by liking and sharing our videos. So more people like you will be able to watch these powerful messages. We celebrate you and see you in our next video. Thank you.